How's it going? Good afternoon. Uh, what I'd like to do today is I'd like to go through uh, an associated board theory of music paper grade five. This paper is from last year, 2017. I think it was the spring exam session. So I'll try to do it in less than half an hour, 45 minutes, hopefully. Uh, so uh, I won't be doing too much explaining, okay? Uh, just working out the paper. Now let's go for it and off we go. Let's share some screen so that we can start working on, on the paper. Share screen, uh, have skim, there you go. I'm using a nice little program called skim. There you go, now you should be seeing, you should be seeing the paper there. Okay, <clears throat> let's get my pen looking thing. Kind of like a pen, but not really. It's still a mouse, it still feels like a mouse. All right, now, read the question carefully. Look at the following extract and then answer the questions below. Now, the extract begins on the first beat of the bar and contains some changes of time signature. Okay, put in the correct time signatures at the two places marked uh, with an asterisk. Right, so that's the first task that is there. And let's work out what we have. What do we have? Um, oh, I'll get a box tool, there you go. Right, uh, you see, if you guys just look at that and that beaming, nah, that's a crotchet worth, that's six semiquavers, more than a crotchet. It's got to be some odd time signature. So let's work out the quavers. That's one quaver worth one quaver, another quaver, another quaver, another quaver. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Five, eight is that time signature. I'm gonna put it right there. See if I can manage to write with this thing. Five. Not great, say again, five, eight. Mm. Okay, let's carry on. Now next, time signature workout. Uh, again, this looks like a crotchet, that looks like a crotchet, that's too big for a crotchet. So <clears throat> don't be, don't be misled, right? So, Let's work out the quavers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four quavers. Five, six, seven quavers. So seven, eight. By the way, guys, I I can use I can use all terminologies available. So um, I can use quavers, uh, crotchets, minim, semi-briefs, all that rock and roll, or I can talk quarter notes, eight notes, 16 notes, like they do in North America. Uh, why don't you let me know in the comments which terminology uh, you'd prefer me to use? Uh, I don't mind. It's, it's, good to have, it's good to be able to use both. Anyway, so these are the time signature, five, eight here and seven, eight there. <clears throat> now, next, rewrite the first note of bar three marked with an arrow, that one, so that it sounds at the same pitch, at the same pitch, but using the tenor clef, the tenor C clef. Remember to put in the clef and the key signature. Remember to put in the clef and the key signature. So, let's draw a tenor clef. Let's take in. Tenor clef sets middle C on the second line from the top of the staff. So that's my tenor clef. Now you guys got to remember, I got to draw four sharps now, and you remember that the appearance of the sharps in the tenor clef is slightly different to the other clefs. So fa, do, sol, sorry, but sometimes I find it better to think in Italian. Father Sol, right, especially when it comes to mnemonic formulas that I used to remember things. 
fa do sol re that's my four sharps um <clears throat> key signature now this note this note here that note there is e above middle c which in the tenor clef is right here now that's a semiquaver so i'm gonna give it that i'm gonna give it a semiquaver appearance okay tenor c clef first note of bar three e above middle c that's the one Write as a brief double whole note, an enharmonic equivalent of the last note of the extract. The last note of the extract here is B below middle C. B below middle C. So a handy enharmonic would be C flat. You guys know what an enharmonic means, don't you? No. Let's give it the appearance of a brief, which kind of looks like a TIE fighter. Needs a ledger line, but that's an ugly ledger line. Let's see if I can do a little bit better than that. Okay, so that's a C flat. C flat, an harmonic of B written as a brief. Let's carry on. Look at the following extract and then answer the question below. Hiding keyboard sonata, lovely stuff. Harmonic analysis, we need to describe chords. Okay, so we need to describe this chord, that chord, and that chord. Let's get at it. The key is F major. Okay, chord, this one. The notes are A, C, F. So in the key of, oops, change two, in the key of F major, in the key of F major, that's chord one. Now, what's the inversion? We have an A at the bottom. Now ask yourself, is that A the root, the third, or the fifth of the chord? Is the third of the chord. So this is a First inversion, first inversion is lowercase b. Final answer, 1b. That's called 1b in the key of F major. Second chord, we have a B flat. Don't forget the time, don't forget the, the key signature, guys. Don't forget to look at the key signature. That's a B flat. B flat, D, G. That's a G minor chord. G minor chord is chord two. The lowest note is the B flat, which is the third. So it's another first inversion. 2B. This card, what do I have? I have, first of all, I have a clef change. If you don't spot that, you'll be giving the wrong answer. F. B flat D, F B flat D, it's a B flat major chord in second inversion. So B flat major chord is called four and second inversion, lowercase C. Chord one B, two B, for C. Let's carry on. No, no, no. Oh, my favorite. Intervals. Okay. We must not get the intervals wrong. That's a bass clef, by the way. We must not get intervals wrong. Intervals is like adding two plus two. So getting intervals wrong is really throwing points at the window. Okay, what pitches do I have? A, C sharp. A and C sharp. A and C sharp, my friend. It's a major third. 
A and C sharp is a major third. If you're in doubt, if you're in doubt, I'm going to look. I'm going to share a nice screen, the classroom maestro. That's a nice little program that I use. There you go. You should be able to see it now. Classroom maestro. Now let me just make sure that we're talking about intervals with classroom maestro. Now I have a, a C sharp. Sorry, A and C sharp below middle C. So these two notes, A, no, yes, that note, A, and C sharp, major third. However, however, um, those are displayed as a harmonic interval in the paper, in the paper. you have to write them as, uh, those are described as melodic intervals. So the notes happen one after the other, okay? Now, this, 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 this next interval, I have a, a D sharp at the bottom, a C natural there on top. So from bottom to top, D sharp to C natural is a diminished seventh. It's a diminished seventh. Again, let's check it on Classroom Maestro. If we're in any doubt, there you go, we'll share that screen now. Should be able to see it. Okay, I have a D sharp. Okay, it's displayed as an E flat, so I need the enharmonic. There you go, D sharp, C natural, diminished seventh. D sharp, C natural, diminished seventh. And let's carry on back to <clears throat> our scheme. Now, what do I have here? Treble clef, treble clef with an F sharp, ho, 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 in the, um, in the key signature. A, F sharp, that's an easy one. That's a major sixth. Major sixth, and there you go, major sixth. Let's just check on Classroom Maestro on the A, F sharp is a major sixth. Good, good going. Okay, let's go back. Radio. okay. Same question, slightly different angle. Now you need to write the higher note to form the interval required. So what do we have, <clears throat> what do we have? I need to write an augmented fourth. Yeah, no it, wrong tool. I need to write an augmented fourth above this C. So I have to write it a melodic interval. So the note head will come after. And an augmented fourth above C, it's F sharp. There you go. Perfect 11th. That would be a compound perfect fourth. So I have to jump an octave. And oops, not harmonic, melodic. A flat. A flat is the perfect 11th of this E flat. Okay, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Oh. Transposition, transposing instruments, transposing instruments. Now, fellas, girls, boys and girls, we're dealing with a clarinet in B. Please remember that, it'll come handy later. Clarinet in B is a transposing, in, clarinet in B flat, sorry. We're dealing with a clarinet in B flat. It's a transposing instrument, it's a transposing instrument, okay? It sounds, a major second lower than it's written. Let's read the question. These are the actual sounds made by a clarinet in B flat. Rewrite the passage as it would appear for the player to read. So keep in mind, you are writing for a clarinet player. So transpose it up a major second. Remember to put in the new key signature and the necessary accidentals. So, now this looks like a, a bit of a, mm, uh, 
Okay, a bit of a chromatic passage. See all those naturals. So it's an extract probably in the middle of the piece or, you know, it could be a chromatic passage. I don't know. I don't know this particular piece, but there's lots of accidentals, right? So what I'm trying to say is that I can tell if the piece is in A flat major or F minor. I can tell uh, by looking at what I'm looking. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just take the key signature of A flat major. So if the piece is in A flat major, the way it sounds, and I have to write it a major second above, what key signature do I need? A flat, B flat. Okay, so key signature of B flat. I'm gonna have to enhance this a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to, yeah, make it bigger. So hopefully I'll have an easier time writing all that. Okay, key signature of B flat, two flats. Okay, let's give it. Time signature as well. Let's be let's be precise, okay? Oh my god. This is a bit of a pain. All right. Now. Okay, so I am writing for my clarinet player. I have to write everything a tone above so that it will make it will produce the right sounds. So A flat, B flat, F, G, D natural. Natural. There you go. And uh, be natural as a minimum. C sharp. Right. Let's keep it tense as much as possible. There you go. And that's a minimum. Uh, let's see if I can make. There you go. Beams stems. Okay, just double checking. That's a B flat. Yeah, tone up G slur. Okay, it's a good idea to check vertically. So if each one of these notes is effectively one tone apart from each one of these notes, but also horizontally. So checking, for example, this interval A flat to F natural is a minor third, right? And do I have a minor third here as well between the B flat and the G? Yes, okay? So it's good to check your work in this question, both vertically between what you're writing and what's given to you, but also horizontally. Keep that in mind. Um, now, a flat right there, B flat, writing for my clarinet player, a tone above. What am I gonna do with the stems? I'm gonna leave them up. Yeah. A flat, B flat, G. <clears throat> okay, now G up there is going to be, whoop, G. I'll break them as an A natural, F, G, all right. Dot, give it a dot, give it a slur, stems, oh my god, oh, I'm getting quicker, whoa, too big a bad line, damn, okay, E natural, F sharp, F sharp, right, give it a dot, okay, let's scroll this way, tiny bit, Okay, now, then D natural, E natural. Um, in the back of my mind, I keep the key signature. I always have it present, not in the back of my mind, in the front of my mind. I have to, I'm to be very aware of it. So E natural back to E there, which is an F sharp. I don't need a new accidental, it's already there. Those are semi quavers. Let's give it that. Good. Okay. Now this is a nice triplet. Okay. G, uh, A, upper tone B, and D, uh, D, 
natural, the natural there, to go in natural, which is already natural here, so I don't need a new accidental. Good, good. Let's make this a triplet. Right, and the slur. Uh, okay, F, G, G, A, natural, B, natural. Good thing I checked because I was gonna forget it. D, natural, D, natural. I was gonna forget about the natural sign if I didn't check. Mm -hmm. Always check. Again, in natural, in natural dot dot give it ah no no not there give it a dot there c was a d right okay now the nice triplets okay b natural becomes c sharp d natural becomes e okay d that's d natural d natural c sharp Yeah. F, G, okay. Now, like I say, check horizontally. That's a nice diminished triad there. It's a diminished arpeggio, not a triad. See? B, D, F. So, is this also a diminished arpeggio? Yes, it is. C sharp, E, and G. Check vertically as well as horizontally. Let's make this a triplet. Now, going all the way up to B natural here, B natural here, then G becomes a natural, and F is a G. Also, ah, also as a triplet. Let's give it a nice slur. Ah, one hatch there. Scroll away, okay. Bar line, E natural, F. F sharp. It's a quiver. Uh, let's see. That's a quiver. Now, if you want to put the details, it's not a bad idea. Crescendo. Uh, did I make all triplets as triplets? Slurs are all there. Dynamics. Pianissimo. Let's have a look from afar. Mm. Yeah. Looks good to me. That's all a tone up. It's all a tone up. Absolutely. See, usually there's a correspondence of accidentals, you see, where there is an accidental here, there's also an accidental there, usually. Okay. Oh, and look, I was almost going to forget a natural sign. There you go, staccato. It's always good to check. Check, check, always check. Did I forget any staccatos? Okay, now it's good. Perfect. See? Check your stuff. Let's carry on. <clears throat> I know some of my students love this question. They love the transposition question. <laughs> okay, we have an extract from Piano Sonatina. Andante Cantabile. Do I forget anything in the previous page? No. How are we doing on time? 25 minutes. Okay, not doing too bad, not doing too bad. Right, let's carry on. Okay, just a quick look. We start in the key of F major. And it kind of moves, it moves towards the dominant C at the end of the A bar. It's pretty standard. So, okay, terminology, terms. Three points for me because I'm Italian and I know what andante means. Andante, well, uh, 
textbook definition is that it accepts a walking speed, okay? But could be a fast walk, a slow walk, what kind of walk is it? At a medium speed, cut the Gordian knot, there's no room for uh, interpretation. So at a medium speed, certainly not quick, not slow, and certainly not getting quicker. Cantabile, la 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 la, cantare, oh 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 oh, cantare in a singing style, cantabile. Dolce, dolce, when you go to the restaurant at the end of the meal, you get the dolce, the dessert. So dolce is sweet, sweet. <laughs> okay, and the last one here, that, which looks like a tree, eyed alien smiling at you <laughs> that is uh, slightly separated it's a semi staccato not a full staccato not a full legato somewhere in between in fact you see you have both element you have the element of the staccato dot coupled with the element of the slur the legato slur so it's something in between a semi staccato uh, uh, uh. Yeah, let's carry on. Name the ornament in the right hand part of bar seven. Of bar seven. The ornament in the right hand part of bar seven. That is a turn, that guy over there. That is a turn. So that's a turn. <clears throat> Complete this statement. Oops. Complete this statement. All the notes in bar seven and eight can be found in the key of, right? All the notes in bar seven and eight. So this one's all the notes in bar seven and eight. All the notes can be found in the key of C major. C major. Now the giveaway, guys, is the B natural. The B natural. The B natural. The music is getting rid of the B flat in the key signature. Getting rid of the B flat in the key signature, which means that we're moving key, or it's uh, it's transitioning momentarily to a different key, if you will. If you want to look at it that way. And the B natural pretty much tells us that we're going towards the key of C major, which is the dominant of F. So it's going towards the dominant. So the answer to the question there is key of C major. All the notes in bar seven and eight can be found in the key of C major. Okay, that disappeared. That was a turn. Now, below the staves, whoops, sorry. Below the staves, write 1C5, the famous 6, 4, 5, 3 progression. Under the two cards next to each, next to each other in bars 1, 4, where this progression occurs. Remember that the key is F major. So the key is F major. What are we looking for? We're looking for chord 1C, which is F major in second inversion, and 5 in root position, which is a C major in root position. So, ladies and gents, when looking for a 6, 4, 5, 3, when looking for this type of progression, it might save you a bit of time to go looking straight at cadence points. So, at the end of phrases. Certainly not at the beginning of the piece, right? Uh, if it's this kind of cadential six, four, five, three. It's more likely to be, certainly at this stage in our musical development, it's more likely to be at cadence points. And in fact, that's my F in second inversion followed by a C major in root position. And I'm gonna have to do it with the free hand. That is one C followed by five. 
Bingo. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Give the technical names of the two notes in the right hand part, marked X and Y. Technical names, just stuff that we need to memorize, guys. Stuff that we need to memorize. We're in the key of F. This is the leading note. And this is the median in the key of F. E is the leading note and A is the median. Leading note and median. Oh. Next, <clears throat> draw a bracket over five notes next to each other that form part of a chromatic scale. Okay, so in this case, you're looking for sharps, flats, naturals, you're looking for accidentals. And there we go, they're jumping at me. They're jumping at me. There, there's six notes there that form part of a chromatic scale. Now I have B, C, natural. Yes, C natural, C sharp, D natural, D sharp, E. I have six notes, but hey, they want five. I'm gonna give them a bracket over five notes, and that's gonna be it. One, two, three, four, five. I can see six, they ask me five, I give them five. Uh, over five notes, Draw a bracket over five notes, that's what I've done. <clears throat> now, next, name one similarity and one difference in the right hand part, in the right hand part, between bar one and five. the right hand part between bar one and five. This much versus that much. Okay, well, it's... Second now, right, I have the box, yeah. That versus that. Well, what's jumping at me there is that it's the same notes, at a different octave and that's it and that's blatant and that's what I think they want you to notice now uh, if you'd be climbing against if you'd be climbing on mirrors trying to come up with stuff you'd be saying ah oh, here I have Dolce and here I have Sforzando Piano uh, and or you'd be saying oh there is a slur here but there is no slur here that's trying to milk something that's not there, right? You have the same notes at a different octave. Simple. There you go. Same notes at a different octave. Let's carry on. Name a standard orchestral instrument that could play the right hand part of bar seven so that it sounds at the same pitch, so that it sounds at the same pitch. So not a transposing instrument and state the family. So let's see, let's have the right hand part of bar seven is this much. Okay, so it's a melody. We can use any melodic instrument or any instrument that's within that range. Violin will be safe, flute will be safe. We cannot say clarinet because clarinet is transposing. Uh, violin, the violin will play that rather comfortably. So we'll say violin instrument. violin. It belongs to the strings family. Underline one instrument in the list below that is a transposing instrument, the clarinet is a transposing instrument. And remember I asked you to remember about the clarinet in the previous, in the, in the, in the question before, the question, in the transposing question here, we dealt with 
sounds made by a clarinet in B flat. So this question gives you the answer. to that question. That's why it's worth, it's well worth to read the whole paper before you pick up the pencil. You might find out stuff like that and get, scrape a couple of points here and there just by reading the paper. Answer true or false to this statement. An oboist may sometimes be asked to play pizzicato. False. Pizzicato means to pluck to pluck the strings and an oboist blows into his instrument so he's not going to be asked to play pizzicato anytime soon scales put accidentals in front of the notes that need them to form the scale of f melodic minor do not use a key signature okay remember that the melodic the melodic scales the melodic scales change back to their natural state on the way down when they are descending. So all I need to do is I need to apply the F minor key signature to these notes. F minor key signature is four flats. So where do they go? B. F minor key signature. See me. La and Re. Again, I'm thinking in Italian. B, E, A, D, flat. F melodic minor, descending. <clears throat> <clears throat> Using semi briefs, all notes, write one octave ascending of the chromatic scale beginning on G sharp. Okay. So you, you have a few choices when it comes to the chromatic scale, right? But um, start from G sharp. So, and you know that the chromatic scale is a scale made all of semitones. A natural, A sharp, pen, pen A sharp, B, oh, that's such a big B, B, C. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to have to invest in a, in a nice pad and pen. Okay, G sharp here. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Generally speaking, in the uh, in a chromatic scale, you haven't got more than two consecutive notes with the same name. <clears throat> okay. Another extract. How are we doing on time? 40 minutes. Okay, we're doing good. We have another extract for violin. Lento. Con dolore means, ah, oh, with grief, with pain. Incalzando. Incalzando means getting quicker. That's only stuff that we need to learn. Three points for me because I'm Italian. Thank you very much. Now, the technical names of the two notes in bar five and six, the key is G minor, okay? So this is A, this is A, which is the supertonic, and this is E flat, which is the submediant. Supertonic and submediant. Tonic and submediant. There you go. Rewrite bar one using notes of twice the value. Twice the value, okay. So everything becomes bigger. Everything becomes bigger. So 
from six eight, we now have six fourths. Instead of six quavers to the bar, we have six crotchets to the bar. Simple. Now, oh, I don't need, <clears throat> I don't need the anacrusis. Okay, but I need a G. I need a D. And I need a G, and then I need an A, and I need a C, D, and an E flat. Right, so quavers become crotchet. The dot is still a dot. A semiquaver becomes a quaver, and a quaver becomes a crotchet. Now, I'm gonna keep the stem down here because I wanna give it a nice slur. Um, yeah, because otherwise I'm gonna, as otherwise, I would, otherwise I would have to put the slur on the stem, I don't like that. Yeah. Semi quavers become quavers, Cro quavers become crotch. Need a slur. Do I have a slur there? No, I don't. Okay. Seems fine to me. If you want to add the dynamic, more power to you. Six eight becomes six four. Quavers become crotchet. A dot is a dot. Semi quavers become quavers, and so on. Notes of twice the value. Remember the new time signal. Rewrite the first note of bar seven marked with an arrow at the same pitch using the alto clef. Put in the clef and the key signature. Okay, let's do the clef and the key signature first. The alto clef sets middle C on the middle line of the staff. What's the note we're on about? Mark with an arrow. That. That is A above middle C as a dotted quaver. A above middle C is here. Dotted quaver. Now key signature, key signature of two flats. So that's my B and that's my E. All right. Do, mi, sol. Do, mi, sol, la. That's A. C, E, G, A. Good. And finally, <clears throat> more harmonic analysis. In a way, you have to boil down these little motifs to a chord. The key is D major. So in D major, that spells chord four. You can see G major there. In D major, that's chord five. And that's called one. So I have a four, five, one progression. Then G, E, B, that's chord two in D major, chord two, that's E minor, it's an E minor chord. So it's chord two, followed by, that's uh, chord five, missing the fifth. But those two notes, C sharp and A, pretty much define A major. That's it. That's the paper worked out. Okay, so any questions, drop me a message, drop a comment. Uh, again, this wasn't meant to be, um, this wasn't meant to be uh, too explanatory. It was just me working out a paper and showing uh, what tools I use uh, to teach theory online teach theory in piano online. I use this tool which enables me to share whichever screen I have available. So you've been looking at a PDF uh, app most of the time. However, I also shared briefly a screen of another app, which is there you go, Classroom Maestro, which enables me to uh, which enables me to use the MIDI from the piano um, 
with this with this app and show various things like notes and scales and chords and harmonic analysis. Um, I could even have used I could even have used this uh, midiculous, you see, which which shows just the notes on the keyboard. It's a, it's an excellent little tool. So, all right. Well, look, any questions on the theory paper? Drop a line, send me a message, drop a comment. Um, if, you want, if you want to book your lesson, get in touch. I hope this has been useful. Happy practice.